in the event of any action which clearly threatened Polish independence, in which the Polish government accordingly considered it vital to resist with their national forces, His Majesty's government would feel themselves bound at once to lend the Polish government all support in their power. After four years of war, the Allies gathered to discuss what would happen when the war ended. They called it the Eureka Conference. Uh, Mr. President, what is the purpose of the conference? Well, we're just getting together for a chat. Now the war uh, seems to be going our way. We're all friends. We get on well, don't we? A few chaps are doing jolly well in the Pacific. Oh, oh are we? Are, oh, good. We're doing good. very yeah, well yeah, on yeah, the what? Eastern Front. Yes, uh, well done, uh, Stalin. Uh, we hear Mr. Yeah. Stalin wants to liquidate some German officers after the war, sir. Is that right? I, uh, yes, he suggested killing between 50 and 100,000. I disagree completely. I thought 49,000 was uh, quite sufficient. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Churchill? Uh, Churchill wasn't impressed. This conference was the first time Churchill, the big cigar, Roosevelt, the big cigarette, and Stalin, the big moustache, the imaginatively named Big Three, had got into bed together. At the end of the conference, they issued a joint declaration, which they called the Joint Declaration. We leave here, friends, in fact, in spirit and in purpose. In fact, they left with a piece of paper that meant practically zilch. At the time, everyone was ecstatic. There was hope. Hope that once Germany and Japan were knocked out, the three world powers could live together. True, there was still the tiny little question of Poland, but even there, fresh imaginative ideas were flowing. After much deep and considered thought, and with the aid of three matchsticks, we have come up with a solution. Churchill's matchstick solution, a suitable model for a man known as the Big Cigar, was demonstrated over dinner. It involved the highly elaborate and sophisticated use of three matchsticks. The matchstick solution shoved the whole of Poland westward to give more room for Russia. The matchsticks met with universal support in Britain and in America and Russia, though not with the Poles themselves who were kept in the dark about the whole thing. We don't make a big pie from small pastries, but if someone was giving your country away, you'd like to be asked about it first, wouldn't you? With the war moving in the Allies' favour and Germany by now firmly on the ropes, what better thing for the Big Three to do than have another conference? But where? How about in Bagun? Uh, it's clean, invigorating, and you can show Stalin and Roosevelt and Balmoral Castle. Ah, oh, Stalin and Roosevelt, you'll really enjoy your conference. It's clean and invigorating. Roosevelt seemed quite keen on the idea of a Scottish away day for the conference. Uh, Mr. President, we hear uh, uh, Mr. Churchill invite you to Scotland. Yes, we'd, we'd like to go to Scotland, wouldn't we, eh, Madge? Yeah? We'd pacify Winston, huh? Play up to his childish ways. Mm? But the big moustache wouldn't play. Sorry, you can't make a peace conference because of war. How about next year? Oh, that was why you had peace conferences, because of the war, silly bloody rusty. But by July 1944, the need for another meeting was becoming more pressing as the Nazis, or Nazis, as Churchill called them, began their slow retreat. We must never retreat. Yes, Führer. Never. We not, we not retreating. We, um... Believe me, Herr Hitler, huh? the Russians are over huh? here, but they will never reach Warsaw over here. But no one told the Red Army. They took Warsaw, where they paused to watch the Germans liquidate the Free Polish Army. With Berlin just a hop, skip and an artillery bombardment away, Stalin now offered to meet up. Stalin suggests Yalta, sir. Where is Yalta? Over yes, there? sir, in the Crimea. Apparently, uh, he doesn't like flying. Doesn't like flying? That's right, Whoever sir. Heard of a Help With me, Yalta yes. agreed as the venue, Roosevelt now played party pooper. Sorry, can't make it now. Election to fight at home. Uh, how about February? Now, as for the venue, Churchill's idea was uh, we could have met up here in Scotland or, uh, or maybe uh, down here in Brazil, nicest time of year, or, uh, or here. Uh, way over here in the uh, Far East, but uh, a bit dangerous, there's a war going on. Or, as a long shot, maybe uh, to meet somewhere uh, down here in New Zealand. But no, we had to settle for goddamn Yalta. And so it was that Eureka II, the imaginatively named successor to Eureka I, was at last put in the year Planet Diaries for February 1945. Now, this 
Captain Franklin, what are we going to say to Stalin? I don't know. I thought you had some idea. I thought you had all the ideas. Stopping off at Malta en route to Yalta for no other reason than that they rhymed, Churchill and Roosevelt met just long enough to jointly compose the less than legendary note. Uh, no more letters alter or falter or falter from Malta to Yalta and Yalta to Malta. Arriving jet lagged, or rather flying boat lagged, in Yalta, the big two, accompanied by a small joint staff of several hundred, were cordially greeted by the big third, who, for a bit of light relief, took them off to see the famous Valley of Death and the Crimean battlefields. After all, where else do three war leaders go to on their day off? Churchill was worried about his election prospects at home, suffering one of his periodic black dog depressions, while Roosevelt was a sick man with only a few weeks to live, or in the style of Churchill's relentless punning... Uh, he could not dinner, he was all of a quiver, with a pain in his liver. It wouldn't be long till he'd fade away and wither. Let's face it, the prospects for Yalta weren't great. Right, gentlemen. Let's get down to business. How are we doing with the war? Well, we haven't quite broken through in Italy, but we will. And how about the Rhine? Have you crossed it? Uh, no, but three German officers have, Paul. How about you, Franklin? Well, we've nearly got this bomb sort of thingy. Does it work? How about you, Joe? We are within 40 miles of Berlin, and our armies might be there. Well, right we're about to bomb Dresden. Dresden? Is it important? Well, it's got a cathedral, a rather nice bus station. Well, it did have a rather nice... It was nice clear bus. to the big three top dogs of war that Stalin had all the key military cards. The Red Army had got their feet under the rug of the old state of Poland. Not only was Stalin playing at home in the conference, but his army was winning away. Right, let's get down to business. Who wants what? I wouldn't mind starting up United Nations. Agreed. With his headquarters in New York. All right, agreed. Yes? Oh, and we'd like to take over the Pacific Basin. We think there might be some money in it after the war. OK, right. What do you want, Winston? India and the Empire. OK, sure, keep it. Ah. Well done, Winston. Fine victory. I hear you've got the Empire. I'm going for the Odeon next. A gentleman, has the question of Poland been settled in there? You understand what I meant about Poland? Um, well... Uh, and did, did, did you understand what he meant, uh, uh, Mr. President, no. about Poland? No, uh, what, well, what are you saying there? Well, basically he's saying they've been no. in, invaded twice before yeah. and uh, they need protection from the East. Oh, from the East? St St Stalin, Stalin, Stalin wants Poland, sir. Uh, uh, right, that's about it. They're yeah, greedy, commie. According to Stalin, the Polish question was a matter of life and death for the Soviet Union. After all, Britain had India and the Indian Ocean in her sphere of influence. The United States had China and Japan. The USSR, according to Stalin, had nothing. Well, let Russia have Poland. Uh, but I've given my word to the Poles. Uh, I mean... Uh, we need Stalin's help to defeat Japan. Well, uh, we, we ended yeah. the war on behalf of Poland. I mean, uh, what about the bomb? Won't that defeat Japan? We don't know if it works. We need Joe's boys, OK? Well, yeah. uh, I... At Yalta, Roosevelt didn't show his hand, unaware that his imminent death, not surprisingly, would prevent him ever playing it. And if Churchill wanted to preserve free Poland, he was faced with the prospect of going to war again, this time with Russia. As Churchill might have said, the big cigar had met his match. The big three reached a brilliant agreement in which they brilliantly agreed not to agree on Poland till a later conference in Moscow. Brilliant. It didn't take a genius to spot the significance of such a clause. The Polish question was answered by not even becoming a question. Yalta had been a major success. The Polish decision at Yalta was a compromise. Yes, Europe will have to endure a few Russians on their soil. OK. Churchill didn't seem particularly ashamed of selling out. We went to war to preserve Polish freedom. We're about to um, achieve that aim. Vote for me when it's all over, if you would. Over the next few weeks, it became pretty clear how the Russians were interpreting Yalta. Poland is ours! No arguments! End of story! That's it! Thank you! Good night, Warsaw! In America, Roosevelt had passed away after offering the immortal line, I have a terrific headache. And it wasn't anything like as terrific as the headache he'd created a few weeks earlier at Yalta. Finally, the war ended. 
and a third conference was arranged, interestingly not called Eureka III, previous Eurekas having failed to live up to the name. Roosevelt was dead. Churchill turned up on Monday, and by Friday had lost the election. Cheerio, Winnie. I'll take over now. Both Stalin's adversaries gone, all that was left was to hand Poland over to the Russians, the only achievement being to reaffirm the one role of all wars, that the end has nothing at all to do with the course for which the war was fought. Yeah, thanks, guys. For your very own copy of the almost complete introduction to the almost complete history of the 20th century, just send a fully completed cheque or postal order for £2.50 made payable to Channel 4 to Almost Complete History, PO Box 4000, London W3 6XJ.